Ben, in this video we're going to add a feed with the Autoblog plugin, and it's pretty easy to do. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go ahead and go over it. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you're on the All Feeds page, which over here on the left at the bottom, you can see the link All Feeds, and you'll see that I have some feeds already set up. But I'm going to go to the top here, and I'm going to add new. Okay, and the first thing to do is to create a title here. Now this title is not public, this is only for you. And you want to make it as descriptive as possible so that you know exactly what this feed is in case you need to come back in and edit it for some reason or even delete it. And I'm going to add a feed from uh, the WPMU.org site. And it's not the main feed, it's a feed from the tutorials category. Okay, so I'm going to make that um, specific. So tutorials from WPMU, and uh, paste my feed in there. Okay, and the first decision to make here is what type of post should this be? Should it be a post or a page or an attachment, etc.? Most people will probably use post, and that's what I'm going to use. Next is the default status for the new post, and you have a choice here of published, pending review, or draft. So if you want these to publish right away automatically, then you set it as published. Okay, and uh, because this feed is from WPMU, I know that uh, there are quality posts there, and so I trust that, so I can go ahead and set that as published. But if you are using, say, a feed from Google News or something like that, you might want to use pending review or draft, so you have a chance to review them first, because you never know what you're really getting with a feed like that. You might have some posts that are slightly off topic, or you might get a lot of press releases, for example, that you don't want in there. But I can go with published. All right, the next is set the date for a new post to the imported date of the original post date. So what this means is, let's say I'm pulling in a feed and it has 10 posts in it, made over the last few weeks. Now if I pull these posts in today and I set imported date, all of those posts will be dated on my site as being published today. But if I set the original post date, then those posts will be set on my site as being published the date that they were published on the other site. So for example, let's say one post was published last week. So I pull it in and set the original post date. So even though I'm technically publishing it on my site today, it will go on my site as being published last week. And so that also means that it goes into the queue of posts on my site as being published last week. So it probably won't be on the front page, for example. It'll be pushed back a few pages, and it'll be in the queue of other posts published last week. All right, and I'm going to use original dates. OK, next is the author details. So set the author for a new post to the author, the feed author, or in this case, it says admin. And the reason it says admin here, because this is the only user that I have set up on my site right now. But I could use the original author from the other site only if however only if I have that author set up as a user on my site first okay so let's say there's an author named John Smith in order for his name to appear on my site I would have to set him up as a user on my site and then I could use this uh, if he does not appear as a user on my site uh, the plugin go then goes to this next line it says okay so that author doesn't exist on your site so who should we use as the author on this site? And you'll have a choice of your users. And as I said, this is the only user I have currently. And so it'll go down as it been. OK, next is the categories and tags. So assign posts to this category. In order to use this, you have to have your categories already set up. OK, and I do. And so I'm going to use tutorials there. Next, treat feed categories as tags or categories. And what this means is that uh, whether you're pulling a feed from another WordPress site or any other type of site, most likely those posts are already in a category on those sites. And so the feeds will come with that information. It'll say, right, this post was in this category titled XYZ. So what do you want to do with that information? Do you want to use that information? So for example, uh, there might be a, a category on another site titled uh, tutorials for mobile. Okay, so I could take that 
that information, tutorials for mobile, and treat it as a tag on my site and put it in as a tag for that post. Now, if that tag doesn't exist on my site, it won't do anything unless I check this box, and then it will add it to my site. And in a similar way, I could actually even create new categories. Right? So I could create a category on my site that said tutorials for mobile. Okay. And then I could also add words, but I'm not going to do that. Either. I could also add uh, whatever words I wanted to as tags for these posts. And so I'm going to add WPMU because I know that all of these posts are coming from there. Okay, post filtering. Um, so include posts that contain, right, this is pretty straightforward, all these words, any of these words, the exact phrase. So let's say I want to I want tutorials about mobile. So only if the post contains the word mobile will I get that post. And I can do the opposite and I can say none of these words. So if the word if the post has mobile in it, then it will not include it. One thing to remember here is uh, you may only be getting excerpts, right? so you might not have a lot of text to go on. All right. Next is uh, post excerpts. Use the full post or an excerpt. Okay. So a lot of uh, sites will provide full posts for their users, so they can use, so they can read them in feed readers, those types of things. But they might not like you putting their full post on your site, so it might be a best practice to go ahead and use excerpts. And then here you can decide how much to use in terms of words, sentences, paragraphs. I'm going to say, I'm going to use three sentences. And then link to the original source. Uh, this is also a best practice. Go ahead and give them a link. And also, users of your site are going to want to click through. Right? It doesn't do this automatically. You need to put something in here. Um, I know that this is from, these posts are from WPMU. So I'm going to see, see full post at WPMU.org. I could make this more generic, but this is only for this feed only, right? You'll need to do this for each feed that you create. Okay, this next box, ensure this link is a no-follow one. So no-follow means supposedly that uh, it does not pass SEO juice with the search engines. And it's probably a good idea. Go ahead and give them, right, whatever little SEO juice that might pass with that. So you might not want to check that, but it's up to you. Okay, next section, feed processing. So import the most recent however many posts. Right? A lot of sites will cut, it, cut this off at 10, so you might not have a lot of choice there, but it does go all the way to 100. Or if you just leave it at post, it'll pull in whatever is available. Process this feed. Uh, never means that it will never automatically go out and process the feed, but you can still do it manually. Or you can pick a time here. And for most sites, every day is plenty, unless it's a news site that updates constantly throughout the day. Every day is probably fine. Starting from, I'm going to start it today, which is the 30th of January, 2013. And I'm not going to set an end date. And then this last section you don't need to worry about unless you're running into SSL errors. Then you can come over here to Add Feed. And here it is, tutorials from WPMU. And you can see that it's never been processed. It's set to process tomorrow. But if I wanted to, I can mouse over here, and I can go ahead and process it right now.